This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hello friends, today I'll be sharing a case of uh, performing fake emulsification in the case of small pupil. This is a 70 year old man with pseudo exfoliation and a moderately sized pupil. The cataract is not very hard and the pupil looked alright for me and I thought I could manage this without using any pupillary expansion device. After staining the anterior capsule, I am performing the rexis which is marginally bigger than the pupillary size. And during the rexis, I could also rule out the possibility of any zonular weakness and the zonules looked quite in good health. And after this, I am performing hydrodissection now. I ensure that the nucleus is devoid of any attachment to the capsular bag. And we can see that the nucleus could be very easily rotated in the bag. However, immediately after hydrodissection, the pupil became very small. I am hoping that by using OVD, it is going to provide me some sort of midriasis. But the good thing in this case is that I have got a good rexus, which is probably the most critical thing in such scenario. So I decide to proceed uh, with FECO without any pupillary expansion device at this stage. After making the initial small groove, I perform a direct vertical chop and I was quite happy to find out that the nucleus was not hard at all. The first hemineucleus is then pulled slightly towards the center of the pupil and then the vertical chop is performed. The two quadrants are then laterally separated. The first piece is then engaged by the phaco tip and then pulled out of the bag and then is emulsified at the pupillary plane. It's important to note that during the entire process of nucleus division and emulsification, the phaco tip and the chopper are always held uh, near the center of the pupil. This ensures better safety and control over the proceedings. The pupillary margin and the iris tissue are vulnerable for damage by the phaco tip. Hence, in such scenarios, a lower flow rate makes sense and also a little bit of extra concentration and focus to remain in dead center and avoiding touching the iris. Another important aspect to remember here is that we will be invariably working more anteriorly than we would have in a typical well dilated case. Well, this helps in such cases as it prevents the irrigating fluid from going behind the iris and then the iris may start billowing. So this is avoided as we are working more anteriorly. However, working anteriorly means that we are much more nearer to the cornea. So eventually, it's all about us striking the right balance of maintaining the plane of emulsification far enough from the cornea but also just at the pupillary margin or just above it. By manual IA, it helps to retract the iris so that then we can visualize and then aspirate the cortex. A single piece hydrophobic IOL is being implanted. I am using the hydro implantation technique wherein the irrigating BSS is used to maintain the chamber in the bag. Again at this stage, it's important for us to confirm that the single piece lens has gone totally in the bag. The lens dialer and the irrigating handpiece are used to retract the pupillary margin in the iris tissue to ensure that both the haptics are well inside the capsular bag. To conclude, FACO can be performed with ease in slightly smaller pupils as well. However, pupillary expansion devices always make it more safe, especially when we are encountered with uh, the slightest challenging scenario. And it makes sense to 
keep these devices handy always. That's it, the case is done and hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.